Um, I'd like to call this meeting of the uh, City Clayton Board of Zoning Appeals to order on Tuesday, May 18th, 2021 at 7 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I can hear myself for sure. Um, roll call. Excuse me. Hello? McGinnis? Yeah, I can hear you barely, but I can't hear what you're saying. I'm calling your name. McGinnis? I'm sorry. Okay, Bob McGinnis is here. Zach Goet. McGinnis here. 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 Ms. Hunter? Here. And Ms. Byers? Here. Thank you. Thank you, and I apologize for that. Um, I'll go through the uh, meeting procedures pretty quick so that we under all understand what's going on. Um, what I'm going to be doing is administering the oath to uh, members of the public who wish to speak on the agenda item and anybody else that wishes to speak on the uh, agenda item in front of us tonight. Um, all testimony given before the Board of Zoning Appeals is sworn testimony. So if you could please uh, stand and raise your right hand, please. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please see I do. Thank you. Is there anybody online tonight? Are we hosting this as Zoom as well? Okay. How many? Uh, how many people are on? One. Okay. We have Terry Combs on the Zoom. Did you understand that also, um, Carrie Combs? I did. I, I'm really probably just here as an observer. Honestly, I'm in the neighborhood and just was going to listen in. Thank you. That's quite okay. We just want to make sure we touch all the bases. Um, agenda items are next, then we'll go through the agenda items. Uh, we'll, we'll ask the applicant if you'd like to add anything to what staff talks about on the case before us tonight. Um, then we'll be discussing uh, among the board to see if we have any questions to either the staff or, uh, or the applicant. Um, we will talk about public comment rules and give you a chance, Ms. Combs, to, uh, to chime in if you'd like. And then um, after all the comments are provided, we'll ask for a motion to close the floor for public comments. We'll ask the applicant if you'd like any response to any of the questions that have come up during our meeting tonight, during discovery. And if there are any further discussion among the board members, then we'll ask if we're going to go ahead and uh, have a vote. We'll determine the findings of facts, and we'll go through a motion on the case tonight. So that, in a nutshell, is what the, uh, what the agenda is like tonight. Um, first item of business tonight is to welcome a new, bar new uh, board member, and that's Barbara Byers. Welcome. I know you'll have fun. <laughs> especially with that added income you're going to be getting, right? Zero? Yeah. <laughs> but public service is, is priceless. <laughs> um, okay, we've done all that. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, we were talking about the meeting for December 23rd, 2020. Um, I think myself, Jennifer Weeks, and Jessica Hunter uh, were there for that particular meeting, so we can vote on those minutes. Um, are there any additions, corrections, amendments, or any other comments we'd like to make on, make on those minutes? I don't have any. 
No. Not from me. Uh, do I hear a motion? Motion to approve the meeting minutes. Second. All those in favor by signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, second, Barbara, would you like to abstain? Yeah, I'm going to abstain. Thank, thank you very much. Um, first meeting of the year. Um, we did get uh, a write-up of the rules of procedure of the City of Clayton Board of Zoning Appeals. Has everyone had an opportunity to review those? Do they look good? Yes. Nods all around. Appointment of the uh, 2021 BZA Board of Zoning Appeals Chair. Uh, is anybody interested in serving as chair for 2021? I guess the question is, Bob, do you still want to serve as the chair or do you want to break? <laughs> I, I could certainly sit in this chair again. <laughs> do I hear a motion? I have a motion to, uh, what is it? Uh, Call Bob as the chair. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All those, please signify by saying aye. 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 Um, well, with continuity, then I'd like to uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Ms. Weeks as vice chair. Second. It's been uh, moved and seconded. All those in uh, any discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, so we're set for the year. And finally, uh, appointment of Barb Syme, Clerk of Council as Board Secretary. Uh, do I hear a motion? I move to appoint Barb Same as board secretary. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 I think our business is closed then. And now we get down to new business. Sorry, new Bob. Um, could you guys approve the schedule for the year? Oh, my apology. You're right. That wasn't on there. Um, we do have a schedule in here. It looks like it's the uh, third Tuesday of every month. Um, do everybody have a chance to look at that and double check with your calendars at home? Yeah, it looks fine for me. Ms. Weeks and Mr. McGinnis say it looks good to them. Anybody else? Any comments? No comments. Do I hear a uh, do I hear a motion to approve the schedule for the BCA for 2021? I'll make a motion to approve the schedule. Do I hear a second? Second. All those uh, in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 No, no opposition, so it passed. Thank you, Mr. Dorman. So the case in front of us tonight, uh, new business, this is case VAR 21-01 at uh, 20, uh, some summary, uh, <clears throat> at 7520 Rose Tree Lane, Tim and Doreen Williams. This is a request for a swimming pool fence variance for the property at 7520 Rose Tree Lane. Partial is number M6025424. 0002. The applicant is installing an in-ground pool and an automatic uh, pool cover in lieu of a five-foot fence as required by section 118712, subsection C, subsection 2. The request was made by Tim and Doreen Williams property owners. Uh, staff comments? 
Thank you, Chair McGinnis, board members. Good evening. Next slide. And, and this is a, a, some repeat of what Bob had said, but in the introduction, but the applicant is requesting a variance to allow an automatic pool cover. Again, in lieu of the minimum uh, five foot height uh, fence required to be installed around the pool area or rear yard to prevent uncontrolled access to the pool. Again, that's section 1187.12, subsection C2. Uh, Bob talked about the parcel involved. The property has, a, has an area of 1.89 acres. And it's located north of Westbrook Road and west of Crestway Drive. Next slide. Uh, this I'll leave up for a couple of seconds. It's a surrounding area. Um, kind of in the, the center, you can kind of see uh, Rose Tree Lane and uh, the, the applicant's parcel. Next slide. This is a close-up of that parcel. Um, so you can see they have a, a rather large yard. Next slide. Uh, I've got the plot plan that I was that I received for the zoning certificate that I've issued uh, for the in-ground pool. So that's on the left-hand side. And then a picture of the back of the house, kind of roughly in the area of where the pool will be. Uh, next slide. So again, I did issue a zoning certificate for the pool on April 22nd with the condition uh, that the Williams installed the minimum five foot tall fence around the pool area or rear yard. Uh, the variance's request uh, is unique in the city of Clayton to, to staff's knowledge, but there are other communities that have started to allow automatic pool covers, including Inglewood, Vandalia, Kettering, and Oakwood. In Beaver Creek, the height of the required fence can be lowered to 42 inches if an automatic pool cover is also installed. Next slide. So, um, this is usually where I make a recommendation, but due to the unique nature of the request, I'm a little hesitant to offer a, a recommendation one way or the other to the Board of Zoning Appeals. I apologize for that, but uh, if you are inclined to approve the request, I do suggest that uh, the Board, since this is kind of a unique request, that the Board adopt a policy uh, just to ensure that certain minimum criteria be met uh, should we have this in the future. Um, one, that the lot on which an automatic pool cover is proposed shall have an area of at least one acre. And again, these are just suggested policy items. Evidence be provided from the applicant's pool contractor that the automatic pool cover can be securely fastened into place with or without electricity and when closed can hold a person weighing up to 250 pounds. That, that criteria is very similar to something that the city of Kettering has um, in their code. And then the owner commits that when not in use, the swimming pool must remain covered and securely fastened. Uh, so with that, I'll put back up, next slide, um, the subject property. And I think I do have the following slide, a, a picture of the, the, back, the back of the house again. So with that, um, that's all I have. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. A couple of questions come to mind, Mr. Dorman. Um, um, how can I phrase this? This is an odd request, and um, it's almost like we're going to be setting a precedent if we do allow, you know, a particular cover here. I understand that. Um, however, you know, that would probably be included in our zoning code, and we are typically not a board that goes ahead and, and makes changes to the zoning code in this forum. We're the ones that would enforce the code as it's written and given to us. Um, what's the follow through with council to make sure that it is properly vetted and, uh, and approved and included? And if we were to approve this variance tonight, um, how would that impact our approval or disapproval? If council you know, goes through legal, they go through the Department of Health, I know there's, there's a lot of conflicting indications you know, and trends on how this is supposed to be handled by various different boards, some governmental, some um, obviously just, you know, um, yeah, you know, people that sell these things, um, you know, so forth and so on. So there, I, I think there's some vetting that needs to go on here uh, so we can properly assess, you know, what, what exactly is happening. So do you have any guidance on that? Uh, any suggestions on how we're supposed to even proceed? Yeah, so uh, 
Current code says that a five foot tall, minimum five foot tall fence is to be installed around the pool area or the rear yard to, to completely enclose the, the, the pool area. Um, this is a variance request asking for relief from that to allow the automatic cover. Um, I think that's something that you could approve without that being in the code. Um, if we do not include automatic pool covers as, as something that we allow in the code, it would just need to come back as a variance each, you know, kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. So that's what I'm thinking, since we don't have it in the current code, we're not really proposing it in the, in the proposed code, uh, that, that you might create a policy. So if we do get any other variance requests, um, you would have a way in which to, you know, kind of consider it and, um, and judge the merits of each, each application. Yeah, that, that helps. Um, I did a little bit of reading too. Um, I know that the fence restrictions um, in various different communities um, are very specific on making sure that, uh, for example, uh, if, you have, if you have stakes in there in the fence, it can't be any, any wider than a certain amount that would allow uh, perhaps a little one, you know, to get their head and their, and their chest through there to be able to get through and, and you know, worm their way through a fence. Um, you know, there's specific, uh, there's specific uh, recommendations and prohibits, um, you know, having any stacked items outside of the fence so that, you know, kids can go ahead and climb up on that to get in. Uh, the fence has to open outward, you know, into the, into the yard. It has to have an automatic, uh, you know, lock on there that's generally on the top so that, again, little ones can't get through. There's a lot of safety features built into a fence. I understand that the fence may not look, you know, all that great, uh, and people may not like, you know, the, the aesthetic look of a fence. I understand that completely. Don't have any problem with what you're saying there. However, um, the safety factors in a fence are inherent. The other thing that kind of bothered me a little bit when I was thinking about this case was that um, during the winter time, we're going to be winterizing, okay? Yes, uh, you know, the, the pool cover is going to be automatic. Yes, it's going to hold, you know, multiple adults. But just doing a, uh, just doing a quick summary or a quick look at, you know, what uh, the, the weight of snow would be, for example. Um, you know, if we had the snowfall that we had earlier this year, and we had two of them, like back to back, both of those um, for, a, for a reasonable size pool, um, got the figures here somewhere that I wrote down as a note, if you'll excuse me for just one second. Um, of course I do. Oh, they were there. I knew they were there somewhere. Um, if, we, if we were talking about a, uh, a pool 20 by 40, that's pretty good size, but it's 800 square feet. That's on the high end. Um, you're probably talking about two to four tons worth of, uh, of weight on top of there, just with a four inch snowfall of wet snow. Um, if you're talking about a reduced size pool of 15 by 30, you're talking 450 square feet. Again, you're talking, uh, <laughs> talking a lot of weight in here. Um, you know, just, just settled snow, not wet, but compacted over time. Four inches of that is uh, three quarter of a ton to a ton and a half. And that's a lot more than just a couple of people, you know, adults standing on it. To me then that says that the homeowner is gonna to have to winterize this pool. And if they winterize it properly, they're gonna to have to bring it back, okay, to be able to make sure that that weight isn't on there. Um, that weight may be, uh, you know, that weight may be, you know, prohibitive, if you will, and, and really, really damage the pool cover itself. Um, the other thing to consider is that if you do pull it back, then you have a pit in the ground. You're going to have to have a pit in the ground anyway when you're doing construction. And I read a lot of the, the statutes that said you're going to have to have a construction fence around this area anyway as you're constructing the pool, which tells me that you're going to have to have at least a fence there as construction is happening. So, you know, I, it just, it just you know, I, I'm problemed by this. I, I, I worry about us setting a precedent that may, you know, not let the homeowners understand exactly what they're getting themselves into and could precipitate a danger in the, in the future. If you're winterizing a pool, if it's open for one reason or another, and if it's not covered because somebody goes on vacation during the winter time, which happens, uh, 
and then they come back to a damaged cover, which could be costly to go ahead and do that. Um, I guess the other thing is that if the insurances aren't looked at properly, the home insurances, you may be talking as an owner, uh, you may be talking about making sure that your homeowner's policy will cover this, whether or not it's going to be a liability exclusion potentially put onto your uh, put onto your policy, so forth and so on. So I, I think there's some deeper digging here that may, may have to happen that I'm not comfortable going through and looking into myself. Thank you. Um, I took a look at the new zoning code that's coming out to see if this issue was addressed there and saw that um, it's the same, the requirement's the same in the new code as the old code. Do you know if when that new code was being discussed, if this topic came up and if there was any, uh, if council or the planning commission had any suggestions or recommendations why they did not include it in the new zoning code? And so the new zoning code did the process of that got started in 2019. I started August of last year. So there, there was a fair amount that had happened even with COVID prior to my coming on board. There were a couple steering committee meetings that I attended. I know Mr. McGinnis was a part of that. Uh, we had a couple workshops with city council and I don't recall that issue specifically coming up. Um, I think it's you know the, the city staff's position to kind of keep uh, the rules and regulations for pool fencing as, as it is. Any other discussion or questions from the board for uh, Seth? I, I have a couple. Um, I know you didn't really provide a recommendation as per usual, and I can totally understand that given this, this topic, but you do uh, proffer um, a recommendation saying, hey, if you are going to approve, do it with these following conditions, the three of those, the at least an acre or 250. So my question, Seth, is when you develop these three conditions, um, well, what's the basis for those conditions? Is it just to allow this one variance to be utilized appropriately? Or was there, uh, I'm not trying to say you, you took it lightly. I'm just wanting to know where's the thought process behind these three specific? Yeah, and, and so because it's not in the code to allow for automatic pool covers, I did a little research. I looked at some communities that in, in the packet of information we received from the applicant, um, we were told that those communities had approved um, automatic pool covers in the past or it's in their code. Um, I talked to Inglewood, the code enforcement officer. They did approve one in their city uh, to date. Uh, city of Kettering had, in, in a lot of the kind of the guidance for a, a potential policy for the board comes from the city of Kettering's code, but they had some of those restrictions in terms of weight that the cover could sustain when closed and, and, um, and just you know making sure that getting commitment that it will be closed by the owner when the pool is not in use, things like that. That, that just came from other jurisdictions that I researched um, in putting the staff report together. Um, I didn't make a recommendation, but I thought if that's something that you guys would be inclined to approve, we probably ought to have a policy just because our code does not address automatic pool covers. No, I, I appreciate that. I, I can agree with that, that we would want some kind of limitations or codified it somehow. So I can understand that. So when I reviewed the packet, I saw where you labeled or, or not labeled, excuse me, identified the other uh, um, suburbs and, and you know neighborhoods that have done the same. So as far as I could tell, you just took what other communities have done and said, here, let's pick and choose kind of and mesh to what you think is, is the best fit for Clayton. Yeah, and those would just be suggestions of kind of a starting point for the board. You know, if, if, again, if that's a, a something that you'd be inclined to approve, let's create a policy and, and maybe just those recommendations can be a, a jumping off point for us. Which goes back to, I think, Bob's position. I don't know if we're the right body to be making policy. Um, that's just my comment. And by policy, I just mean um, making sure that when these variances come before you that you're being consistent. 
Yeah, I think, I think so. consistency is indeed, you know, what we should be doing. And the other thing to be consistent, of course, is if you set a precedent, then that means that, you know, that that can continue in that same vein, because we don't want to exclude anybody after we've gone ahead and, and granted a particular uh, a particular, you know, favor, you know, or, or a modification of the code, if you will, uh, through a variance to a landowner then other landowners are certainly entitled to that same uh, that same benefit. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's the difficulty of a unique request. I mean, this this is creating precedents one way or the other. Which I think, Bob, goes back to your point. You know, we have at least one acre, so what's to say 0.75 of an acre is not good enough or half an acre is not good enough? I mean, this could be argued that any sort of policy or precedence that we make is capricious uh, uh yes <laughs> at the very least so i think that's something to be considered as well but it is in our authority to set up a variance like this with conditions so i mean we we can do that i don't think it's outside of our of our jurisdiction of what we are allowed to do i just want to put that out there that's correct thanks jennifer Any other questions to uh, Mr. Dorman from the board? Thanks, Seth. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Williams. Uh, would you like to uh, would you like to talk to us then about anything that Seth may not have covered? If so, please come to the podium. Um, give your name and give your address for the record, please. We promise to be kind. We're just being thorough. Oh, can they hear me now? Okay. <laughs> It's just like, um, we just rather have a cover than no fence. A fence would kind of take away from the sight line. Um, we have eight grandkids, and they are all great climbers. I can guarantee they could get in unless it was under lock and key any time. Uh, we have lots of little critters, raccoons, chipmunks, crawfish, that would probably be in there. There would be less debris in the pool because you'd have to close it every time you got out. I wouldn't have to have a solar cover. You wouldn't have to have a winter cover. We know a couple people that have these and they think they're great. Never had their, they've never said any problems with the snow, but I really haven't thought about that much. The pool would be cleaner, there wouldn't be leaves in it. Um, we're surrounded by woods, as you can see, but that's pre-tornado, so we don't have quite all those trees that we used to, but that is our place. And across the street, there's a pond, a lot bigger and a lot deeper, and there's no fence around that. So that's kind of why I wonder, everybody's got ponds, should I dig a pond instead? And then I wouldn't have no restrictions. <laughs> okay, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Ms. Williams. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else that would like to speak in favor of the application? Uh, Dave Crane with Knickerbocker Pools. Um, so I'm here and, to... And, and your, your, home, your address, too, please. Oh, 1869 Willow Green Drive, Beaver Creek, Ohio, 45432. Thank you. Um, so I'm here just to answer a lot of questions. Um, the problem with auto covers is some people just don't know what they are. So an automatic pool cover, in our minds, is considered a horizontal barrier to the pool. So in one of the first slides when we talked about what section 1187 point whatever talks about a fence being there to basically create a barrier to the pool. An automatic pool cover creates a barrier to a pool that far exceeds any fence. Four foot, five foot, six foot, eight foot. I don't care how tall that fence is, children will go over top of that fence to get to that water that they can see toys floating and things of that nature. We put a cover across that pool water 
and they cannot get to that water, period. The covers go on the pool in 30 to 45 seconds, depending on pool size. It is a manual switch, either that you are at a touchpad, you enter a four digit code to access the touchpad, you have to fully engage the switch as the cover moves, or it is a neutral position light switch that has a folding locking lid over top of it. So after you open or close the cover, you can lock that switch access out. So safety wise, it's there. Uh, that cover supports 485 pounds per square foot. I've been one of 18 adults standing on top of one at one time. So when it comes to snow load, it's not a concern at all. Um, that cover basically, because it is resting on the water of the swimming pool, that's what gives us the structure. So the water underneath is what gives us our structure. When we winterize a swimming pool, not one drop of water is drained from that swimming pool. So we're basically winterizing the plumbing lines, winterizing the equipment. The pool vessel itself stays totally full of water. It will freeze, but that water has the ability to expand up and down, not entrapped into a closed plumbing line. So the cover is the summer cover. It is the winter cover. So it is the cover that they will use all times. Um, actually, state of Minnesota per capita is one of the highest auto cover states in the United States and Canada far exceeds us with what they do in auto covers. So no, probably not an issue. Um, homeowners insurance, it's a lot of gobbledygook with each insurance company. Um, I have USAA, I have an automatic cover. Um, USAA basically told me they didn't care how I covered the pool or what I did for a pool, they could care less about a fence, they could care less about an auto cover. They say it's my personal liability. If I wanna have $300,000 liability, that's what I have. If I have a million, that's what I have. So they did not really care. Unfortunately, our fence codes require us to isolate the pool from the neighboring area. 80 to 85% of accidents and injuries are never stopped by that fence because they come out the back door. So this is a choice that a homeowner is allowed to make to create that barrier that your fence is requiring, but in a way that protects not only the neighbors, trespassers, but it also protects the family from coming out the door and into the pool area. It doesn't take long seconds for someone to be in a swimming pool. When this cover is on the pool, as far as I know, I've been with Knickerbocker since 1995, there has never been an incident of a death or a drowning when an auto cover is on a pool. That's a perfect safety record, which a fence isn't gonna get you. Um, covers can be closed fairly easily without power. So the system basically is a motor that is a two-way motor. When the cover is opening, the drum of the cover and the housing at the deep end of the pool is turning and rolling that cover off of the pool. As it does that, it releases a rope system back through the concrete that basically is what's going to be used to close the cover. If power was to have a failure with the cover open, you can take the lid off of the cover mechanism and you can see the two ropes on the pulleys, and instead of a motor turning it, one person on one rope, one person on the other rope, and you can pull that thing closed. Can you open it without power? It's a whole lot harder. Um, so it is, it's much more difficult because you would have to physically try to spin a drum and pull that cover at the same time. Um, so that's pretty tough to do. I go to these variance meetings a lot. We've gotten a lot um, that we go to um, other areas around you guys. City of Vandalia, it's in their code. City of Inglewood, it was passed as a variance in a neighborhood where I'm gonna say these houses are all on 0 0.25, 0 0.3 acre lots. Um, we got one passed in the city of Riverside in a plat of Ryan Homes. Um, that one was actually, when I went to that one, you know, when someone's sitting on two acres, no one's going through their backyard. I mean, you know, when you're sitting in a Ryan home plat, every kid in the world's going through the backyard. Uh, these houses are 10 feet apart. 
Um, so when we went to Riverside and had one of these exact same meetings, it was kind of a shock um, that they allowed it. Uh, but when we get into a lot of the larger areas, it is definitely more well received. Uh, State of Indiana has allowed these since the late 80s, auto covers in lieu of fence. Uh, the state of Michigan recently passed auto covers in lieu of fence, so some of our surrounding states. Surrounding this area, Butler Township has passed a variance, City of Inglewood has passed a variance. It's in the City of Vandalia's code. Most areas, when we go to them in the off season to talk about how do we go about looking at your code, most areas don't want to talk about it until they have a resident that wants something. The only forum the resident has to get something in a timely fashion is through a variance. A lot of times after a variance meeting is then when we actually get our foot in the door to start talking to the code. Uh, some areas still require it to be just a variance, uh, while some areas will look at it as a code change. Uh, with a variance, they get to look at it every site by site. Um, so if someone is not concerned about this site where there is no close proximity neighbors, they can make a decision. If they're in a neighborhood where everyone's a quarter acre apart, the board has a chance to make a decision with that as well. Um, people will have these covers on the pool. My pool is covered if we're not in the pool. 100% of the time it's covered. Why? My pool stays clean my heat stays in, and I have the control. My kids today are 13 and 14 years old, so it's not an issue of they know how to swim, it's an issue of they're home and I'm not. I have the key. I know that they're not in the swimming pool. It gives the homeowner the right to make that decision of how to protect their family and how to protect those people around them. Believe me, no one wants someone to drown in their swimming pool. Fences, while they give some protection, definitely to probably those one, two, three, four years old, but you get kids that are eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old, a fence isn't gonna do anything except give them an extra three seconds to jump over it. It's all that fence is going to do where this cover will basically keep them out of that water. So that's what I have. Um, if anyone has any specific questions about covers, I'm here to help. Um, I'm here to educate. Um, if anyone's got questions. Thank you, appreciate your comments. Any questions from the board? I have a question. Um, so Knickerbocker would be installing the cover. If there were any mechanical issues with it, are you also the company that would come out to fix it? And about how long does it take for you to do those service calls? So yes, we do the installation of covers. Uh, probably about 10 years ago, the company's out of Indianapolis. Most major manufacturers are represented in Indianapolis because it was kind of the east of the Mississippi area when Indiana passed the law. So it used to be everything came out of Indianapolis. Today, we're probably installing somewhere between 35 and 45 covers a year. So we have an in-house service technician. Um, 24 to 48 hours if a cover can't be closed. I mean, you can't call me at four o'clock on a Friday night and expect me to be there on Friday night at six o'clock. But again, typically the cover is going to be able to be closed. Opening that cover is where you can have more problems, but typically a cover can be closed. Obviously we're here to keep that safety. I mean. Believe me, a drowning death in a swimming pool would be the worst thing for my business. Um, so we're going to respond quickly. Um, but can I say that I'll be out there in two hours? No, I can't. So I, I have a question about the manual closure of these um, auto covers. So growing up out west, you know, my neighbors, we had a pool, everybody had a pool because it was stinking hot out, out there. And uh, had neighbors that had the auto covers and things like that. And when we had to close it manually, it was heavy and hard to pull. I mean, is that still the case? Is this something that to, I'm not trying to be mean, but a little bit older uh, homeowners, is this something that they are going to be able to do on their own 
whereas it took us a couple of people to, to do it. So I guess have the auto covers lightened up and been still durable to, to be functional without the power? Uh, two, two adults can close a cover. Um, I mean, you are literally just basically taking those ropes and pulling on those ropes. Uh, the drum disengages with one bolt, so it's very easy to disengage the motor. Uh, if you are pulling against the motor, that makes it a little tougher. It's probably more of an education uh, than anything else. Um, but uh, two adults basically can just pull that cover closed. It, it's not much different than pulling out your winter cover, your mesh safety cover. Um, it's just wrapped up on a drum, and you're just going to basically, through a pulley system, pull that thing closed. It is not, it is not extreme difficult. And anyone wants to come to my house, we can disengage mine. You guys can pull all you want. Okay, thanks. I appreciate the explanation. Uh, I do have a question for the Williams. Um, I, if uh, Doreen, if you want to step back on up, just real quick. So I, I, I got your letter, uh, we all got your letter and I appreciate that and I can understand the value of keeping raccoons, crayfish, deer and other things out of the pool. Can't tell you how many times I fished a dead gopher out of a pool and it's not fun. Um, so a lot of your explanation of why you wanna go with the auto cover over the fence is, is kind of seems like personal reasons, like it, it, the, the sight line is gonna be ugly with a fence. The, the maintenance may be harder without the auto cover. Um, have you guys looked at doing both a fence and an auto cover and just decided that's too expensive or it's just kind of redundant because the auto cover was just more effective as a water barrier than the fence? I kind of want to get behind your rationale a little bit. I like the idea of the auto cover. We have a couple friends that have that and it just looks nicer. I mean, yeah, I don't really want the expense of both of them because it's going to be just as much money for the auto cover as probably the fence. And then just getting somebody in there to put the fence in, because everything now, it's like, oh, you know, we're three weeks behind, we're a month behind. And so, yeah, I just think it would look nicer. I just want to sit on my deck and be able to see that <laughs> and know that's a pool there and, you know, have everything around it. I mean, I guess if we have to have both, we have to have both. I would still probably get the auto cover because I just like the idea that it's safer because, like I said, my kids will climb that fence. They'll figure out how to get in. There are three of them in gymnastics, so it wouldn't take much for them to do it. Even yeah, even better. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh-huh. Thank you, Zach. Anybody else? Um... Okay, uh, public comments. Um, Ma'am, I know that you're online. Do you, uh, do you have any comments or questions that, uh, that you'd like to ask? Bob, could you first get a motion and a second to open the floor? Uh, do I hear a motion to uh, close this section of the, uh, the testimony and then open up uh, public comments from the floor? I motion to close and to open up the public comments on the floor. Do you hear a second? I'll second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Um, is there anybody on Zoom that would like to uh, make a comment? Um, no, I, I, I guess I'll just make a brief statement. Uh, my husband and I, we live right across the street from the Williams. I was just interested in the proposal and hearing um, what was being done. Um, yeah, we don't have a problem with it. We ourselves have a, a pond and are very careful. We have also have young children, young grandchildren and watch them carefully around that. So we certainly appreciate the safety concerns. Um, I was interested, um, the gentleman from Knickerbocker, I was just curious, if he has a rough estimate of what they put in when they're putting pools in, um, are they putting more of these covers in versus fences? I was just kind of curious about that, but we are we're fine with it. Um, the cover is okay with us as the neighbor. Thank you, ma'am. 
Today, probably about 60% of our pools are getting automatic covers. And out of that 60%, probably about 60 to 70% of them are meeting the fence code. Um, so there are people that are still putting auto covers in. I myself in one in Beaver Creek that still had to put up a fence. Um, but um, probably about 60 to 70% of the time, a lot down in Warren County. Um, I'm doing one in Vandalia this year. Um, Miami County, a lot of the townships where you have one and a half acres or more is kind of where they set their precedence. Um, but about 60 to 70% of the time, probably give or take, uh, when an auto cover goes on the pool, it does meet the fence code. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, does that satisfy you? Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Anybody else online? Sir? Stand by. You haven't sworn in. Please raise your right hand. Repeat after me here. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give to this board is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say I do. Thanks, sir. Now, if you can come up here, uh, your name and your address, please. Kenny Henning, 4418 Skylark Drive, Inglewood, Ohio. Um, I did want to say I am friends with Dr. McJelton, who has this at his house and Carriage Trail in Inglewood. That's the one they're referencing. Um, there is no fence over there. He has children in Northmont, and uh, their lots are a lot closer than what is shown. Uh, I, I'm sure you all are familiar with the Carriage Trail plat over by, by the YMCA. And the other one, just in our community, is uh, another good friend of ours. They have a six and a seven-year-old on Moss Creek, and uh, their backyard is the golf course. They don't have a fence. They have the cover also. And um, neither, both of them are friends, and neither of them have had any problems in the winter before. And uh, both of them live in, I mean, nice plats where they didn't want to go with the fence because it kind of tampered with the beauty of like the settings that they're in so um the, the one in inglewood as the gentleman from uh, the pool company stated there is a home directly behind them and then all four sides uh, carriage trail is very residential so that's all i have to share thank you thank you sir and if i may say so congratulations on your son uh, Anybody else wish to favor, uh, speak in favor or, or oppose or have questions on this application? And just if you could, a motion to close the public comment period. That's what I was looking for as a procedure. We got a lot more steps than we used to. <laughs> procedure light. Um, do I hear a motion to uh, close the public input for this application? Make a motion to close the public input. Thank you, Zach. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, comments then from the board members. Um, any comments? Any motion? Um, this is a, an interesting one, as we all agree. I'm familiar with these pool covers, and they, they are very safe and give me great peace of mind as a parent of young children. I never realized that they were an alternative to a fence, though. I thought they were an added safety measure that a homeowner could install. So to grant the variance, we have to be able to agree with our five conditions. And I'm struggling with <clears throat> number two and number three. Number two is installing the fence would, would constitute an unnecessary hardship upon the property owner. And number three is, will not adversely affect the public health. Um, so, I guess I would just like to hear opinions of everybody else on the board about that. Can we say that it would be an unnecessary hardship? 
And can we say that it would not adversely affect public health and safety? It's interesting that you picked out two and three because those were the ones I was having issue with as well um, as I was thinking on this. And I think as you consider two, it's the unnecessary is the the, the language there, the, the hold up there. Um, is it unnecessary? I don't know. I mean, yeah. So um, requiring a fence and a pool cover, that's how I've always seen it. I have friends in big lots, small lots that have both. And I think that has come out to be more of a personal preference for homeowners. Um, to me, I know I'm personally terrified of anything liable or, or a liability that I may have with small kids and their friends coming over. So to me, I would err personal on the side of more barriers instead of, of less. Um, so that's just kind of my thought. And I agree that I cannot say at this point that it's not adversely affect the public health. So I'm interested too on what, specifically what Ms. Weeks thinks. Because she, she and I seem to sometimes be opposite, so I like to I like to hear what you have to say, Jennifer. Not to call you out and put you on the no, spot, it's but good. I did. I'm good. Um, no, I'm having a hard time on this one too because you know we always think of fences as being the standard, um, but I do definitely, especially as a parent, um, th those pool covers seem extremely safe from you know from what we've read, the research I did, the research we were provided. Um, so that definitely has a positive to me. And to me, it's like, well, if we can, if we agree, if you agree, the number three, we could get beyond because the variance is desired, it would not adversely affect public health and safety if we agree that it's just as safe as having a fence. That would be the whole, like, I, I believe that would be where we would have to, or in each of us have to decide. Is it as just as effective as a fence? Or do we think it needs to have either both, it needs to have the fence? Um, I, do, I, I struggle with it a bit, except that, you know, it does seem to be other communities are accepting this more and more. I imagine, I'm sure the technology, it seems like, has gotten much better over the years. Um, as a parent, I would almost want the, the cover, I think. It, it just would be a, such a huge safety f feature for me if we had a pool. Um, so I think, it, so, and then as far as these um, conditions go, if you agree that number three, it would not affect the public health, I believe then that kind of, you go back to number two with the unnecessary hardship, well, um, if we agree that a pool cover will not adversely affect health, well then it's unnecessary to make, sh to like, to make them have a fence and a cover. So to me, it, it boils down to number three and how we feel on that and how we, that's my opinion. Excellent perspective. Thank you very much. That uh, that's good discussion. So I guess a, another comment I have for the board is: if we do grant a variance, do we grant it just free and clear, and then open up the pathway to anybody who wants to put in a pool, or do we set up stipulations and conditions? And if we do set up stipulations and conditions, how do we make sure that those are valid and not just five people in a room making up conditions? Yeah, that that's a good question, um, Mr. Dorman. Can you can you address that? I, I know that people that want to put in a pool have to come to you. Um, hopefully, people aren't just going to be out there constructing pools, you know, because they can and decide to. And if they do come to you, um, what criteria are you going to use to be able to guide them based on any decision we may make tonight? So, so in my time so far with the city, uh, when someone has come and said we want to put in a pool, um, so far they've all put in fencing uh, to comply with the code. So if they were to say to me, we'd rather not do the fencing, we'd like to do an automatic pool cover, you know, it's this great thing, I would say you will need a variance. Um, and I would probably explain to them uh, the policy that you all set and some of the things that if, if, if there's um, if there's a minimum acreage if, the, if they don't meet that then I would say you, you've got to do the fence um, you know and that, that would be my kind of guidance and direction and if you'd like um, you know maybe outside of tonight's meeting if there are conditions or a policy that you want to set we can vet that through the law director uh, just to make sure that we're um, stating everything in a legal way. 
Okay, I appreciate that. I, I can look at this as uh, very similar to uh, new technology that came in, you know, and continues to come into our to our area. Uh, satellite dishes years ago comes to mind. You know, it was it was something that people are, oh, well, I want that. I want a satellite dish. Well, you know, automated pool covers are are in lieu of a fence, okay? They can be used in lieu of a fence. Uh, we've heard testimony to that tonight. Uh, we've done research and I'm satisfied that yes, you know, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing. I appreciate the clarifications from uh, the representative from Knickerbocker Pools because um, all I kept seeing was general references to the amount of weight that it could hold rather than a very specific technical description of 485 pounds per uh, square foot, which is, which is awesome. That's great. That, that's a lot better than several adults, okay, which is much more general. So, you know, I, I, I'm pretty much convinced that the safety of the pool is good. Um, it, it then the responsibility falls back on the homeowner and in this particular case I can just see by the people out there you know at least their eyes that you know they're they're going to be very responsible when it comes to this so that's a good thing um, can't speak for everybody can't speak for somebody 20 years down the road and what I'm thinking is that this could be a modification or at least a, an a, uh, adjustment if you will to the code in section 1187.12 uh, subsection C subsection 2 that does have the fence requirement in there. Um, we can also have a cover and, and then justifications for that cover could be addended uh, based on the recommendation from staff where you had items 1, 2, and 3. Uh, the lot on which the automated cover proposed shall have an area of at least one acre. The evidence is provided that the automated pool cover can securely fasten in place and can sustain a person weighing at least 250 pounds. Um, and three, the automated pool cover must securely fasten in place at all times when the swimming pool is not in actual use for swimming or bathing purposes. So we've got multiple responsibilities in there when we're talking about this. We've got the homeowner responsibilities, we've got uh, staff responsibilities to ensure that it's installed in, in compliance, and then of course we've got the, the property size you know, that, that we need to look at as well. So I think we might have this controlled I don't think it's a setting a precedent when you look at it as an alternative to a fence. Um, knowing that these covers are going out, knowing that other, other jurisdictions are, I'm not going to say all over the map, but they have their own specific uh, rules in place, I think that's probably appropriate. I don't think we're getting off the, uh, the beaten path there because we're the city of Clayton and we are establishing our own rules, especially within the, uh, the guidelines of the new zoning code as it's coming out. So based on all that, um, you know, I, I appreciate that. Um, I'm worried what happens when Seth Thorman moves on to the city of Toledo or the city of New York, you know, and to make sure that your replacement, which is why I want it documented, I need this documented and we need to have it included somewhere so that it can be used for reference in the future. Any other comments from the board? I have uh, another comment, Bob, since you brought up uh, Seth's um, conditions. Well, I know. <laughs> I'm having an issue with the first one. To me, that seems like we're setting ourselves up to have a variance on a variance again and again and again from more people. So do we set up a property, uh, a size of property specifically, or do we just technically eliminate that and sit there and go off of the case by case as the variance should be where we're not having a variance on top of a variance um, is the first thought and then I guess the the second comment or question is for Seth um, looking through your research and doing my own I only saw it was what Oak, Oakwood I believe was the one that said it had to be like 40,000 or 4,000 square feet on lots containing at least 40,000 in the city of Oakwood, I didn't see any other uh, neighborhood community that required a lot size. And I don't know if you found any other ones that required a lot size besides Oakwood. Uh, no, just in the limited research that I did of the um, five different communities, Oakwood was the only one with a, a lot minimum, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that was the only one I found too, so. 
Well, if I can address the uh, the first one, or at least we can chat about it. Um, you know, of course. The first, the first item on our variance is that, uh, and the, these ma'am and, and sir, Mr. and Mrs. Williams, we have to verify or, or validate the different conditions, okay? And there's conditions, there's there's five of them that are, that are associated with a variance. So if we were to approve or deny, we need to go through and address those, which is what we're talking about right now, is the individuals, one, two, three, you know, so forth and so on. So let's read it. Uh, the variance requested arises from a special condition of or involving the property which are unique. That is a situation which is not ordinarily found in the same zoning district and that the situation results from the enforcement of this code and not by an active, uh, and I'm sorry, not by an action or actions of the property owner, the applicant, or any other person or party that has control of the property. So if I think about the, um, that statement, Zach, I'm, I'm looking at the enforcement of the code. The code itself talks about a fence. Got to have a fence. Yeah. And in this case, what we're talking about is a possible replacement for a fence, that replacement being the pool cover. You know, we've heard a lot of testimony about the pool cover, um, how it can, you know, stand in, in safety equally, if not, you know, a little bit better, if you will, than a fence. So what we're doing is we're substituting, in this particular case, the pool cover versus the, and, and that is a literal interpretation for me of the code. So that's, that, and I stumbled over that too. I looked at that and I said, well, now, how can this, how can, how can we even grant this, you know, based on item one? But at least I, I you know, I kind of looked at it that way. What do you, what do you think? Well, I, I uh, with the variance requirements, I didn't look at number one because I thought it was pretty, you know, unique and the special conditions involving the property. When I said number one, I meant Seth's recommendations of the lot size being at least an acre. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, okay. but but to, to go to your question, yeah, I, I would agree that, I mean, the owners have not caused this or it's not, you know, any action or, or actions on their part and it is truly a special condition. Because, um, I mean, you look at it, they don't have a whole lot of neighbors. They have one across the street that we heard from that said, hey, I'm cool with this. I got the pond. Uh, um, so I think number one's not an issue, to be honest. Um, and it goes back to mine and uh, Ms. Hunter's uh, comments that it's two and three that were really hold up with Ms. Weeks timing in that number three is the real focus. <laughs> Any other thoughts and discussions on the board here? I, I might just point out that the zoning on the property and, and I guess the residences at, on Rose Tree Lane are, are zoned PD-1. Typically a plan district um, should have an approved plan. That zoning would have been applied to those properties when the city annexed them in 1998. Um, and, and a lot of properties received a plan development zoning without an approved plan. So uh, from a zoning standpoint, that's a little bit unique. Thank you, Mr. Dorman. Sorry, I have a question for Seth, if I may. Um, I couldn't find it in, in our code, but do we have, we don't have a minimum lot size here for a pool saying you have to have, you know, if I own a 0.10 acre of a lot, I could put a pool if it could fit, right? Basically, basically, the zoning um, requirements for a pool come out of the generally applicable regulations, Chapter 1187. If you can meet a 10-foot rear yard setback and then meet the, the side yard setback of your specified zoning district, which this doesn't technically have because it's a planned development without a plan, um, you can have a pool. Uh, plus, you know, the fencing is, is another one of those requirements that's listed. So. Perfect, thank you. Any other comments? Well, I think I'm feeling better about two and three, but I, I'm still struggling a little bit with number one in the fact that it doesn't seem unique to me. It's anybody in that zoning district could say, I don't want to fence around my pool either. So, as has been mentioned, if we say okay to this one and we don't have that unique thing that we can point to that would prohibit everybody else in the same zoning area from a for asking for the same thing, um, we might be opening up a big can of worms. 
one thing that might make it unique and would i be correct in saying the the pool won't be visible from the road anything like that it won't be visible from anywhere except on your property so that's a possibility that that aspect of it could make it different from other homeowners that might be requesting a similar variance And I would ask if any of you visited the site. I was out there today, and there is a little bit of topography in the backyard. It's I wouldn't call a rolling hill, but there there is a, a bit of a hill there in the back as well. And that would make it difficult to construct a fence. That's the line. No, no of thinking. I mean that's a valid point. I think you still could. I think it would be a little bit more challenging. There is a there is a septic or a leach field back there as well. So. And again, I don't know if there's any restrictions to building over a, a leach field. What do you think? What kind of uh, how would you like to uh, vent that a little bit more? Well. The size of the lot, I suppose, makes it, I, I guess what we're trying to find is a reason that not having a fence at this property would make it not dangerous, whereas other properties would still require a fence in order for them to be not dangerous. So to me, the fact that it's essentially hidden, there's not gonna be traffic passing by, you know, kids walking down the road that see it, um, could, could meet that, that requirement. Um, I'm curious, did, did you guys investigate, oops, sorry, did you investigate the fence options at all, you know, get quotes, plot out where you might put it, that sort of thing? So it, it's, the fence has really never, never been an option for you. So I, I want to tug on that string then a little bit, if I, if I may, uh, Miss Williams. Um, so how did you come to know about the auto cover? Was it when you sat down with um, Knickerbocker Pools and they said, here's the options, you could do a fence, but we don't like fence, and you could do this auto cover, it's really cool. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I should have asked you to come up. <laughs> it's quite okay. We're going to get you on the record. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how we found out about it. But, I mean, we've, we have a couple other friends, one in Farmersville, that he has one. And we went down there and looked at that. And, you know, he pressed the button, opens, closes. And his, his pool is a lot bigger than what ours are going to be. Knickerbockers did theirs, I don't know, 10 years ago. And it's still, press the button and it goes. So it's lasted forever. And I'm sure it's new and improved. I have a girlfriend Knickerbockers did in London. She's right on a lake, doesn't have a fence, and they really like theirs too. But yeah, that's how we found out about it. And yeah, I don't, it, we, we, you can't put anything over a leech line. So it's just like right over there, and up this little way is the well. And mm -hmm. Well, that's important to know, especially when it comes to the uh, placement of the pool, because if you have leach fields back there, if you've got a well system or something along those lines, that pretty much dictates where you can place that pool right there's just just like one little spot because I really wanted it like right behind the house but we can't put it there so it has to be over a little bit but you know it's right there where there's trees I mean most of those trees are still around there and there's nobody there there's a farm behind us and like Terry said she's across the street and it's a uh, there's a cul-de-sac if you go way down there there's one more house but there's four houses on that street and everybody's retired and there's no kids except for grandkids that come over Thank you, ma'am. Zach, mm -hmm. any other questions? No, I, I don't have any questions. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Uh, I do, I guess, have a comment towards um, Ms. Hunter's, you know, is this unique? Um, you know, with, with when you're talking real, real property, the law considers almost every property to be unique because you can't, you know, copy somebody's property to a next. And in this situation, given the map that we were provided on, on page whatever of the packet, where she where they draw out where it's going to be, I think that might also satisfy our unique requirement, considering they have that leach field there, they have the trees. So it really is dictated where this pool can go. So that's just follow on comment to your hey, we're unique. Appreciate it. I, I, I agree with you. I, I think that this is still a unique property and 
I think we can get away with number one is agreeing that it's, it is unique just based on the different circumstances. I think we'd be okay there. I wouldn't have an issue with it. Any other comments? Um, sure, one trepidations? more. Trepidations? Okay, so we're gonna decide on this particular variance. Um, I would just like to discuss Seth's recommendation that we put the conditions along with it, which Zach has been talking about all night. Can we, sorry, <laughs> which has been mentioned before, <laughs> put it that way. Um, can we grant this variance, no conditions, and say we're doing it that way because we want each property to be evaluated individually? We don't want to set a precedent that if you're over one acre, your variance is going to be granted. Hmm, Seth. I think that you absolutely can because you're doing a findings of fact for, for each application um, in which you can outline the unique circumstances of, of that application. So, yeah, I think you can. I, I, I think that's a good question, too, because I don't want to make work for us. And, you know, one thing I always look at is that if we have a certain type of case that's coming in front of us all the time, I want to try to get that into the code. <laughs> so I want, to, I want to bring that to council because we're getting harassed, you know, with, with a particular type of case over and over, and this has got that potential if we're not careful. So thank you for asking. I just want to comment on that. Uh, with the conditions, I think we should have some at least that are around safety, at least with safety conditions around the one acre. That is, that could really be maybe a sticking point for other things, so we could eliminate that one. But I think at least we should keep those last two about the type of cover and when, the, and then it has to be closed at all times if you're not using the pool. I believe that should be in there. That's something we, I, I think we can hold up to. It, I would think any code would want something like that in there. The one acre is a much more, subjective sticking point, I think. So we could take that out if we didn't want to put that in there. But I, I do definitely think we should include some safety measures. Yeah, we've, we've had problems with measurements in the past. I remember when uh, in the old city of Clayton, we had a, a case that came in front of us that had an acre, you know. And according to the, uh, according to the survey, it was 0.98 acres. And the two lawyers that were on the board with me at the time, we're shocked that me, an engineer, didn't go specifically to that precision and say, well, wait a minute, you know. <laughs> so it was, it was a real discussion that night. So it can be a problem, but, you know, if, if they're coming to Seth anyway, the, if the applicant's coming to Seth anyway, then he would be able to, to make a judgment on the size of the lot, the position of the lot, and, and, and so forth and so on, I would think. Sounds good to me. So the one comment I have um, about the safety, I think we can all agree about the being closed when not in use because that I think is safe and, and more common sense than anything. Um, I do have a question, if I may, for uh, Mr. Knickerbocker. Um, with the pools, with the auto, auto covers, um, from what I could see it seems like they're all standard that they're all going to be that durable and that that weight bearing where it's you know the 425 or 450 square feet or or am i wrong i mean is there really a vast difference in quality of the weight bearing on those and if you could restate your name dave kramer uh there is an astm safety standard and i don't know what you guys got in a packet but there is a safety standard that these covers are built to to meet so instead of the, I think lot number two, about 250 pound adult, most people are gonna put that safety, that the cover must meet or exceed the ASTM safety standard, which is an independent body that does research and development on different safety reasons and stuff like that. Just like someone says with a fence, it can only be so wide. The ASTM is basically testing these products uh, as a third party to all the other covers. So, all the big cover manufacturers, CoverStar, CoverPools, APC, um, they're all going to go towards that ASTM safety code. Perfect, thank you. And I have a question too, sir, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you, I didn't do that on purpose. Um, how flush to the ground is your cover? So there's two ways to do covers. There's a top track auto cover system. So, or there's an under track auto cover system. So no matter what the housing of the cover can be recessed or it can be deck mounted, 
Uh, typically on new installations, it's going to be a recessed housing. So where the motor and the drum is, is all under concrete. Uh, for the most part, we encourage the use of covers on a rectangle pool so we can do an under track auto cover. So the track would go on top of the steel wall of the pool. Uh, the concrete or the cantilever coping would pour over top of it. Everything is below grade of the concrete. So there is no trip hazards. The lid is a flush walk on lid. If you did a different shape pool, then you would have to go to a top track cover system um, because the cover is still going to be a rectangle. No matter what the shape is underneath, the cover is going to be a rectangle. Uh, with an under track, we just get better, you know, the, the cover is not dragging on top of concrete, less wear and tear, things of that nature. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. I want to make a comment. We have in our notes um, that ASTM safety uh, specification. So we could put that in with a, that could be our um, condition, have that specific. Um, it's under the Vandalia, their code. They yeah. have it. So if we wanted to include that instead of that other wording of the 250 pounds. Yeah. I think that might be good. Yeah, I, I agree. I could get behind that just because that is, is a standard that the industry is, is known and, and comfortable adhering to. So instead of saying, all right, 250 pounds or 450 pounds or uh, two tons, you know, we have a marketable um, safety standard that the industry is already adhering to. So just to make sense to incorporate that into our variant standard, I would think. I agree. And this uh, case in front of us tonight is for this particular application, for this particular location, for these individuals, Mr. and Mrs. Williams. So what we can do is we can go through and we can, we can make a recommendation on this particular case. However, we need to also make a recommendation for Mr. Dorman so that in the future, if he has applicants that come in for pools, that he'll be able to refer to that and then say, okay, and these are the general guidelines then that, that we want you to adhere to. I think, I think that would be appropriate. Yes. But for this particular case, we can also add specifications for Mr. and Mrs. Williams if necessary. Just like in any future cases, we can add specifications for those applicants. Yeah, and we can use what we've set tonight as precedent for those other upcoming cases. So, yeah, I think that. Mr. Dorman? I have nothing further. Sorry, you looked like you were ready to talk to us um, okay based on that any other any other discussion any other questions comments concerns do I hear a motion Wait, do we need to go through the these are still yes who would like to do that <laughs> oh, <through. laughs> Based on the uh, findings of fact, um, let's let's go through them individually. Uh, the, number one, the variance requested uh, from uh, arises from special condition of or involving the property, which are unique. That is a situation that's not normally found in the same zoning district, and that uh, the situation results from the enforcement of this code and not by any action or actions of the property owner, the applicant, or any other person or party who has had control of the property. Do we agree? I agree. I can agree. I concur. Agree. Who would like to, uh, who would like to make the comments on, uh, on how we support that finding? I'll comment that, um, as discussed, uh, almost every property is unique in its own way and we discussed this property and with it being set back off the road and um, in a more rural area without other um, without a lot of foot traffic and everything it makes it unique to this to this case I would like to add that um, this is uh, really a uh, also uh, uh, we're looking at a cover in lieu of the fence requirement so this is a transition if you will from the fencing requirement that we had to or have to a uh, to a cover that is uh, that is going to substitute for that fence. Item two: the strict application of the provisions of this code, from which variance requested, will constitute unnecessary hardship upon the property owner represented in the application. 
Do I hear concurrence? I agree. I agree on this. I agree. Agree. I agree. And who would like to discuss an item two to substantiate that claim? Well, um, after many comments, discussions, questions to the applicant and within the board itself, we were told uh, price-wise it, it appears that it's going to be the same for a fence or for this automatic cover. So, I mean, either way, they have to abide by some sort of barrier. So I don't think there's a unnecessary financial hardship there because one way or the other there has to be a barrier. And then furthermore, we didn't really hear anything that would, I think, ultimately constitute any sort of unnecessary hardship upon the uh, property, given the testimony of, of the uh, applicant as well. Thank you, Zach. And, and, and yes, and, and it will allow the uh, ease, if you will, and a and, uh, little enhanced security of the pool, you know, um, in lieu of the fence. The fence is each easily broached, and this sounds like, uh, like the cover would be much more difficult to, uh, to try to roll back especially for little ones. And hearing that the, uh, the cover is going to be at the level of the pool or at level of the ground, if you will, um, there won't be any gaps that will allow anyone and the little ones to be able to get un under there and, and get in the pool, which is, which is, I think, important as well. Any other additions to uh, item two? I think for this one, too, if we're saying that it's a safety thing, that um, the, the pool cover is as safe or not more safe than a fence, it would be a hardship to require them to pay for both. True, why duplicate? Thank you, Ms. Weeks. Item three, the variance desired will not adversely affect the public health, safety, and morals. I think we've uh, heard a lot of testimony to that effect, but would anybody like to, uh, like to make additional comments on that? I think we've been assured that the safety provided by an automatic pool cover, as long as it meets the standards we discussed, um, satisfies the public health and safety requirement. Thank you. I agree. I concur. I agree. Agree. And item four, item last, Mr. and Mrs. Williams are going, thank God. <laughs> That's why I'm supposed to not hold this down, you know. <laughs> uh, the variance uh, desired will not compromise the general spirit and intent of this code. Um, I think we, uh, I think we've heard a lot of testimony to that particular effect as well. We also had some conditions that uh, that Seth wanted to put in here, and I think I'd like to read them at this time. Um, I'll start at the bottom. The automatic pool covered must be securely fastened in place at all times when the swimming pool is not in actual use for swimming or bathing purposes. Evidence is provided that the automated pool cover can be securely fastened in place and can sustain a person weighing at least 250 pounds. We've heard that the, uh, especially from the, uh, from the provider and the installer, that the, uh, the weight limit is a lot higher than that. And then we get to the lot. We've had a lot of discussion on the lot. Um, do we want to amend that, uh, that uh, se sentence here that says lot on which the automated cover proposed shall have an area of at least one acre? Comments? I, th I think we should take that out because we can do that by case by case um, as it comes. Since this is just a variance, it's not a code setting, it is a variance, so we can do it case by case um, for each of them. Just, uh, that way it's specific to the property because there might be a smaller property but it would still make sense for them to be able to do it. I don't want to set that precedent at this time. I do want to go back to number two, um, and I think we should amend that as well to be that meets the or ex meets or exceeds the ASTM specification that's listed here. I think we need to put that instead of the the weight limit. Thank you, well. Mr. Dorman. So, did you get that? That's well. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the board on the uh, lot size? I just concur with Ms. Weeks. Okay, do we all agree on uh, item last then? Yes. Agree. Agree. Thank you all for your input. Uh, very, very much accepted and, and uh, glad, you, uh, glad you're all engaged and awake. Um, do I hear a uh, motion on the uh, case in front of us then? Variance uh, VAR 
2101. I'll make a motion to approve the variance VAR 2101 um, with the conditions. We listed two conditions, uh, one being that the, um, it, the cover should, uh, let's see, the cover should meet or exceed the ASTM specification F134691. Um, it's from the American Society of Testing and Materials. Should meet that, meet or exceed that specification. And the second condition would be pool, sorry, the automatic pool cover must securely fasten in place at all times when the swimming is not in actual use for swimming or bathing purposes. That's my motion. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Approved unanimously, Mr. and Mrs. Williams. Thank you very much. Um, Seth, what have we got coming? Um, I have received an application for a side yard setback, although I got an email this evening that suggested they may withdraw the application uh, due to they've got some estimates back and it's coming in higher than they expected. So it may be withdrawn. We may not have a meeting in June. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, see no new business. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? second.